Hello, welcome to uh, today's video. Uh, today's video is going to be another review on another Honda. Um, my good friend Pete has got an FN2 which is kind of let me for the weekend so I thought it would be rude not to do a review on it really. Because um, I've never really experienced FN2s much. I've driven like GT diesels and stuff. Um, I had an EP3 so I'd be interested to see what the uh, FN2 is actually like. Um, I've got it for a couple of days so um, it'd be interesting to see what it's like, what it drives like compared to EP3. Is it a worthy successor to the EP3? Dunno. Everyone everyone on like the suit type R owners on Facebook slates FN2s for not being a proper type R. I've been that guy, I've said the same thing. Um, just because I owned an EP3 so I was biased. So yeah, I'll be reviewing a FN2 Civic today. Okay, so this is a 2007 Civic Type R FN2, so it's completely standard. Um, it came from factory with 198 brake horsepower and 142 foot-pound of torque, I think. So it's got one brake horsepower more than the EP3, one, and it's got three newton meters of torque less than the EP3. This is what gets me. I don't, I don't understand it. Um, another thing is, obviously this, according to, I've looked up on Parker's, I thought it was about 60 kilograms heavier, but according to Parker's specifications, is apparently about 150 kilograms heavier than an EP3. I don't understand it either. So Honda thought they'd replace EP3 with a car that's heavier, one brake horsepower more, three meters of torque less, and to be honest with you, you can feel the difference. It feels big and it feels, it, it, obviously 150 kilograms is not a lot, but it feel, you can feel it. So yeah, let's take a look around it. So yeah, the, uh, the FN2 comes on 18 inch wheels as opposed to the EP317s. Uh, this is actually, this is, I'm starting to sound like a comparison video, it's not really, it's just a review of the FN2. So yeah, the FN2's got 18 inch wheels. Uh, the standard tire size on these, I believe, the standard tire size is 225 40 18, um, which I think is quite a good tire size because uh, a 225 is a good, is a good width. Uh, 40 isn't that like really a low profile for a 225. Obviously, you've got to remember it's 40 percent of the uh, of the width, um, so they don't actually look that low profile, which is good. A lot of cars these days have uh, low profiles, like you say, for example, Fiesta ST, so it's like a two. A 205-40-17 or uh, something like that, but the profile is so low, you c it adds the suspension stiff already. Same as this, the suspension is quite stiff, quite firm, which is good obviously. But if the profile was too low, it would compromise the ride quality too much. So luckily, the ride actually in this is not too bad. It's firm, but it's not uncomfortable. It's not too bad. Um, the seats help, but um, you know it could be a lot, lot worse. I think the tire size was a good choice to be fair. I'm not sure about the 18 inch, but. It works with the size of the car, I suppose, because the car looks visibly bigger than an EP3. So I suppose the 18 inch wheels, they fit. And to be fair, they're not a bad looking wheel. I don't know if you agree. The 19 inch Rage wheels you can get, different story. I'm not a fan of those. I think they're like diamond cut finish. Um, and they, they do look too big for the car. But the standard wheels, good wheel. I think they're not a bad looking wheel. Um, to be honest with you, when they first came out, I wasn't a big fan. I haven't been for a long time. Uh, they've grown on me a bit, but that's mainly because of the interior. The, uh, the FN2 interior is a much nicer place to be than the EP3. Uh, this is this one area where I think the EP3 is definitely, it's come a, well, the FN2 has come a long way from the EP3 as in terms of the interior. Uh, the seats are much, they're much more bolstered than the EP3 seats. Uh, they're, they're a lot more supportive. Uh, they hold you in quite nice actually, they're a really nice seat. They've still kept the, uh, the gear stick at a relatively it's a quite high height compared to most cars. Obviously the EP3, as we know, is sort of up here. Um, the FN2 is quite, it's quite high as well. You, I mean, you have your arm on the armrest and you can reach it quite nicely, to be fair. Uh, so I, I like that. It's quite, it's in good, good location. Um, obviously the EP3 one was a bit better because it was higher close to the steering wheel, but I mean, I like this. It feels like a good, sh the, the throw feels a little bit shorter on one of these. Um, I'm re I really do like the interior of the FN2. The only thing I will say is like, 
with the screen with the, the rev counter here um, it's quite far back from the actual the actual the screen the actual like plastic uh, so like you know sunny like you get a glare off it's hard to sort of see uh, especially with the sat nav unit up there the sun shines on it and it's really hard to see even at full brightness that's a bit annoying um, but I don't mind I like this you get like a cockpit sort of feel because it sort of curves around um, it looks all right the other thing I will say is that the sat nav in this car it's awful it's so dated the sat nav now obviously in particularly in, the, in this car is 11 years old doesn't seem too bad but when you look at it it looks 20 years old all right so let's have a look at the sat nav i mean it looks promising right now doesn't it right so this this is what comes up when you start the car up i mean you can tell already it looks like something from windows 97 so you push okay i mean it doesn't look too bad does it really and then you go into the menu I mean, I don't know if you agree with me or I'm just being a bit of a dick here, but I think that is awful. The whole, like, the whole menu is just, it looks so dated. So, to be honest with you, if you've, you've got one without a sat nav, you're not missing out. I think Honda could have done a bit better there. They could have produced a bit of a later, more up-to-date version of their, of their sat nav, but... Apart from the, uh, the sat nav being absolutely toilet, it's not actually that, I quite like it in here. The seat is really comfy, but the position of it is awful. So this is the seat all the way down. This is far, as low as it will go. I just feel like I'm sitting too high. And look, if I jack it up, who on earth is going to be having a seat this high? I don't even know. Still going. Still going. So apart from the, uh, the dated sat nav and the seat sitting too high, the interior is quite a nice place to be. There's loads of room in the front and in the back, for either for people normal size and not Japanese size. Let's go see if it's a good car or not. Right, let's take this puppy for a drive. The throttle is still really responsive on these. Uh, even though I believe it's fly-by-wire now and not uh, cable like the EB3 traditionally was. Um, so far so good, I'm comfy, um, the ride's nice, it's firm but I'm not hating my life, I'm quite happy to drive along these pretty shit roads in this car to be fair, I'm not, it's not killing me. Ah, oh, there's a lake, bruh. I'm so sorry, Pete. You cleaned your car yesterday. I think I think my other GoPro is going to capture this, but I'm going to go for it really slowly. I'm doing four mile an hour. Sorry. I'll tell you what, first impression, this still goes really well. I'm quite surprised. I'll tell you the annoying thing about Pete's car. The aircon doesn't work. Oh, killing me. Killing me. I don't know what the temperature is today. It's sunny. The speedo is difficult to see. Uh, the clock, I can't even barely tell the time. The glare on it is awful. Um, so I can't even tell you what the fucking temperature is outside. Either way, it's a warm day. Oh, I can see why they're popular. Because instead of the EP3s being a bit, it's a bit more refined. This appeals to everyone. I've seen middle-aged people driving these. Um, quite a few. Because um, to be fair, they're practical. Uh, the level of equipment's quite good. You like dual climate control and stuff like that. Cruise control, auto lights, auto wipers. So you can see why they're appealing, why they sold they sold well. Um, and to be fair, like they got they're good value now these days. I think um, I can't remember much people pay for this. It's done seventy four thousand miles. Feels fine. Feels nice and tight. Uh, it rides nice. It's not knocking or anything at the moment. Right, let's fucking go. Stable.
Uh, chassis feels really good actually, I'm quite impressed. Um, shame I'm stuck behind these absolute Sunday drivers. Come on everyone, turn off, and you. Ugh. Bruh. Oh, this is going to be a test here because we've got a little bit of uh, S bend coming up and a few good corners here. So uh, let's see what it's like. Brakes feel quite good actually. feels good. I do like the steering. Good feel on it and it feels precise. Okay, so how do I rate this car? Um, I want to do it in, in, in sections, all right? So if I own one of these, I'll be happy with everything. I mean, when I say comfort, I mean, as far as like comfort equipment and how it feels inside the car as well. Um, I mean, the ride, I'm happy with the ride. It's firm as well as, at the same time as not being too bad. It's not crashy or anything. It rides really nice. Um, you've got all the things you need, dual climate control. I mean, obviously the aircon doesn't work in this one, but in general, so, that's good. So you, you got everything you need, really. You, you auto wipers, auto lights, cruise control, steering wheel controls for stereo, uh, climate control. So comfort, I'll rate it eight out of ten. Um, engine performance, I'm gonna give it a surprising eight point five out of ten. Because to be fair, it may only have one brake horsepower more, three foot pound of torque less than an EP3. That's all it needs. Doesn't really need any more. I mean, you can see what Honda done now. It's all about balance, and it. There's no point having 500 brake horsepower, but you can't go around a corner. So, to be fair, for the power for the chassis, it's a well-balanced car. Um, so yeah, 8.5 8 out of 10 for the performance. Uh, practicality. For a hatchback, I'd say it's probably up there, isn't it? Practically. Good headroom, uh, good legroom. Even behind me, there's a decent amount of legroom, so I'm gonna give it boots. Pretty, it's pretty big to be fair. Nine out of ten, I reckon, for practicality as an everyday driver. Um, would I buy one if I was looking for something in this price range that did everything? Yeah, why not? I don't mind it. Um, so yeah. Overall, I'd say it's, a, it's a got to be a seven, seven and a half out of ten. Good car, to be fair. I like it. I'm very surprised. I did. I've always underestimated the FN2, and I'm glad I've been proven wrong because I like Hondas. So yeah, overall, seven point five out of ten. It's a good car. So that's my review of Pete's FN2. Uh, big thanks to Pete for letting me borrow it for the weekend. Top guy. Um, hope you enjoyed the video. I really enjoy making these little like review sort of videos. It quite gives me something to do. I like it. I like you know editing them and stuff like that. So if you liked it, leave a comment. Tell me what you think of the FN2. If you think it's toilet, if you think it's good, if you think it's all right, if you don't care. Let me know. Um, subscribe if you want to, and uh, I guess I'll see you next time. <laughs>